Greetings and God's peace be with you. My name is Christopher Lynn and I'm one of the co-rectors at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center. Last week I shared with you all uh, a reflection on Absalom Jones uh, and for this uh, SSS video I'm going to be talking about Frederick Douglass. Uh, he is likely a person in history that you know a lot more about than you might have Absalom Jones, but uh, February 20th is his feast day in the church. So speaking of that feast day, let us uh, pray together the collect that is uh, appointed for this day. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we bless your name for the witness of Frederick Douglass, whose impassioned and reasonable speech move the hearts of people to deeper obedience to Christ. Strengthen us also to speak on behalf of those in captivity and tribulation, continuing in the way of Jesus Christ, our liberator, who with you and the Holy Spirit dwells in glory everlasting. Amen. Jesus Christ, our liberator. Um, I don't hear him described as that. I don't hear Jesus described as liberator enough, I think. Um, there are so many ways that, uh, that we as human beings still need liberation. When I try to reflect on Frederick Douglass's life, I have strong memories as a kid of learning about him in various stages of school um, and going back to some of those stories because he was such a prolific writer. Um, you can actually read any of his three autobiographies, but he wrote in many different forms and fashions. Uh, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just say a little bit of introductory things about Frederick Douglass that might help you to think about him. So you may know uh, that he was born here in Maryland, uh, where St. Francis is, uh, over on the eastern shore. And uh, the area that he was born in is Talbot County. And I know from my family, we actually have a lot of history there. Um, my my parents uh, live on the eastern shore, spend most of their time on the eastern shore. And uh, growing up, I spent a lot of time on the Chop Tank River. We would often uh, explore around that area, swimming in the waters, uh, but the Tuckahoe Creek is right around the corner from the Chop Tank, and uh, that is a body of water that I've been in, um, and it was in fact on that body of water uh, that Frederick Douglass was born into slavery uh, in probably about 1818. Uh, we are not sure exactly when he was born. He's not exactly sure, but... Uh, he picked a birthday for himself, February 14th, uh, and, and a birth year, 1818. Uh, later, he went on to actually pick his name because the given name that he and most slaves were given were uh, of the, the name of their master. So I, I feel pretty deeply connected to Frederick Douglass. I know that because of his uh, connectivity in Maryland and, and in Baltimore, because he lived in Fells Point for many years, um, we, we got to learn a lot more about him, uh, perhaps in school than it maybe in other places, but he was such an important force in the abolitionist uh, movement uh, and in the women's suffrage uh, movement. Uh, he was an editor, uh, an orator, uh, an author, a statesman. Uh, he was an incredible reformer that brought about um, uh, emancipation of the slaves, and he actually had a home uh, that was a part of the Underground Railroad and was a significant part of that. But uh, he just did so much important work of liberation in this world. Um, he was also a minister in the church, but uh, it's his relationship with the church was complicated because of uh, because of the way that the church was so embedded with slavery, with the institution of slavery, his early experiences of learning about his faith came from white ministers, and some of those were positive and not, some not so much. Um, but uh, some thought him to be an early, uh, um, an early creator of uh, the liberation theology movement, as he brought in uh, the the text and and. Um, and God's work of liberation of, um, 
of all people, but particularly uh, uh, of the African Americans that were enslaved. Frederick Douglass also really worked in powerful ways to shape policy. Uh, he played various roles in government, uh, founded many newspapers, uh, things like the North Star, uh, and, and, and wrote prolifically. I mentioned earlier that his autobiographies, he has three different ones, and you can hear um, from his own words uh, the stories of his life and what shaped him. I remember hearing about uh, Frederick's mother, Harriet. Uh, he didn't get to see her uh, very many times in his life. Like many other slaves, he was separated from her, was raised by, I think, his maternal grandmother, um, on another plantation, and his his grandmother was responsible for raising many of the slave the enslaved children. But I, one of the things that really struck me is that I try to imagine what their life was like, and she uh, was said to have traveled multiple times, walking twelve miles from the plantation where she was to the plantation where he was. And I don't know exactly where that was, but I have walked and run along the road. Um, that makes me think about that journey that they um, that she would take to see him. When I think about the psalm appointed for this day, uh, it is a it's a powerful one that I want to I want to share with you here. Um, it is a portion of Psalm eighty five. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for He is speaking peace to His faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to Him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. These last words, righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. I think about that pathway uh, that uh, that Harriet Bailey, his mother, traveled to see him those 12 miles. The righteousness of her feet, a woman who was a field hand that actually learned how to read, um, which was a phenomenal feat. Uh, Frederick, Frederick Douglass wouldn't learn to read until years later uh, when he was taught in Baltimore, the beginnings of that. But um, the, the, the family that uh, that that he, um, that oversaw him uh, as they sought to teach him. Uh, the woman that was teaching him was was instructed that uh, was reminded that it was illegal to to teach enslaved people how to read. So uh, Frederick uh, found ways of doing that creatively, uh, and he obviously was a brilliant mind that went on to write so much and to speak so much truth to power in ways that changed this nation. Uh, and so as we go to his words and his witness, uh, we, st we still today have so much to learn from that. When I think about these words, how mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, to imagine what it must have been like for a parent, his mother, to be separated from, uh, from Frederick and her other children, I presume. Um, but those, the sweetness of those kisses, mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Uh, their relationship, that love that connected them, and the love of God that connects us all, but particularly those that live uh, on the margins, those who are oppressed, those who are enslaved in many ways. And while, uh, while chattel slavery does not exist in the form that it once did, there are so many ways that slavery still exists in this world, and the institutions of racism and white supremacy still impact our individual lives, our life in the church and our collective lives together uh, in this county, in this city, in this state, in this nation. So as we follow in the footsteps of Frederick, blessed Frederick Douglass, uh, and we seek to be uh, freed ourselves, how is God calling us to work for freedom and liberation for all people? Uh, I'm grateful to know a little bit more about his life, and I hope that you'll spend some time reading about him uh, he who escaped from slavery to, to flee to the north, uh, to New York and Massachusetts, to live out his life and witness, to, to be uh, a force that could change this nation and the world. Um, how can we be inspired to follow uh, 
in his faithful way, in this way that, um, well, in this way that God can use us to bring about justice and peace and love. We pray all this um, as, uh, as Jesus seeks to guide us as the people of St. Francis. Thanks for listening, and until next time, uh, Christ's peace be with you. Thank <laughs> you.